Hey everybody, and welcome to my N5 series in the SP404 Mark II, where I cover a topic in about five minutes. This is session 22.0, and for this session, I just wanted to cover some ways to use the SP404 Mark II as a actual live looper. But for this session uh, specifically, I just want to get into a couple of things just so you understand what we're doing. Uh, one, if you want to use the metronome so that you can actually play in time to a BPM, one thing that you'll want to be aware of is with, you can go to shift utility, go into systems, and you have under your click menu, the very top one uh, for the option here is output assign. If it's turned to on, that means that your output for the metronome is going to go to your line outs and to your cue output on the front for your headphones. If you just want you to be able to hear them in your headphones for the metronome and you don't want your audience to hear it, then make sure you set and turn this to off. I'm going to leave it for leave it to set to on so you can see when I turn it on and off and still be able to hear it coming through uh, the mix. And I'll kind of try, do my best to explain what I'm doing. Uh, another thing to note is that from what I've seen, I, what I have seen is under MFX on the uh, isolator page, if you go to the SX delay, the maximum time that you have right now is 1-1, one, one, which is one bar. There's a few ways to work with this. If we set our BPM lower, we can increase the amount of uh, looper time that we have, but uh, then your metronome is going to run slower. So you'll have to kind of work with your timing there or think of other ways to try and output a click track. And I'll do my best to try and get into these a few of these things, but effectively just understand that you've got one bar of looping, we can also do some fun, clever tricks where we can use uh, the remain button and routing audio to two different buffers if you want, or you can have for loopers, so you have two one-bar buffers that allows you to do some fun things. Or if you want, you can also have a single looper that you could then output into another effects based on how you have things set up. So if you remember, you can come into shift and uh, let me remember here, shift pad 16 for EFX settings. So if you have bus one going into bus two, then you're running these in line and you can have the, basically what, what you'd want to do is have bus one be your buffer and then bus two be where you are running some extra effects on top of it if you wanted to do that. Or if you instead wanted your looper to, you wanted to have two in parallel or you wanted to do some other things, you might want to have uh, your type B set for your, effects settings so you can have bus one and bus two be separate and then still feeding into bus three and bus four personally unless you've got an external midi control device i would not suggest using bus three and bus four but that would be a way if you want depending on how you want to run things you could get away with using bus three and bus four with the new changes that allow you to assign midi cc's and then you could have an external controller to adjust feedback and other things there but i i think your best off and best option is to use bus one and bus two. So anyway, uh, with that said, um, I hope that goes over some of the options here and going forward, we'll experiment with some of the other delay, uh, as well, but really the one that I was going to focus on the most is the new added to firmware 2.0 SX delay and a few ways to kind of use that to try and get a looper going and see, show you how to kind of do some stuff live and the pros and cons for doing that. Anyway, hope that was uh, helps you get some foundational pieces going, and we'll get into it in the next session. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.